Silonan will assist you in Achilles healing the enemies to the afterlife. And in this video, I'll be explaining her kit as well as telling you how to build her and what team she works best in. Starting with her kit. Her normal attacks are pretty normal at a baseline. However, one thing that is interesting to note about them is that her plunge attack scales on her defense. And the reason that is, is because her skill will make her enter her Night Soul Blessing, which will enhance her normal attacks and also her plunging attacks. They now do defense scaling geo damage. In addition, her skill will also give her for these source samples, which will all have their own element. And the standard for these will be geo, but they will be converted based on the element of your teammates. They could change to Pyro, Cryo, Hydro, or Electro. And once Shilonin's Night Soul meter is maxed out, she will activate all of the source samples, which will allow her to reduce nearby enemies' resistance to the elements that the source samples have absorbed, which includes Geo. The Night Soul meter can be increased by doing normal attacks in your Night Soul mode, which is a part of her Ascension 1 passive. During her Night Soul state, the Geo resistance shred will always be active but this will only account for when she alone and herself is on field, as her Night Soul will cancel when she swaps out. Her Night Soul state lasts a maximum of 9 seconds, and like I said, will be cancelled if you swap out of her. Her ultimate will do a hit of Geo damage and then cause another effect based on the elements of her source samples. If two of them have been converted from Geo damage, she will periodically heal the active character for quite a chunky amount based on her defense. And if not, she will do off-field Geo damage, not unlike a sub-DPS. Her Ascension 1 will give Shilonan special effects while she is in the Night Soul state. If two of her source samples have been converted, she will be able to use her normal attacks to gain more Night Soul meter, which is required to activate the Resistance Shred. If this is not the case, Shilonan will be getting 30% damage bonus which is useful for a main DPS Shilonen. Her Ascension 4 will give Shilonen 20% defense after a Night Soul Burst, and maxing out her Night Soul meter will trigger its own version of a Night Soul Burst, which will have a completely unique cooldown from the original effect. Now, as for her talent priority, if you're going to use her as a support only, level up her skill as high as you can, and then go for her ultimate if you have resources left over. You can safely ignore the normal attacks. All of her buffing is within the E, and while the Q is nice for healing, it already heals a lot at base. The normal attack can just be ignored. For a DPS, it gets more special, however. The Q and normal attacks are both a lot of Shilonen's damage output, and while the E is mostly supportive, it's very important for her damage as well, while also increasing the damage of her teammates. So all of them have equal priority and level them all in whatever order you desire. Now that you understand Shilonen's base kit, you'll want to have to equip her with a weapon. First of all, I'll start out with the support weapons, and then the weapons for a DPS Shilonen. For support, the best option is going to be the Peak Patrol Song, her signature weapon. It gives lots of defense as the secondary stat, which is very useful for Shilonen's heals and personal damage. After a normal attack or plunge attack, it will give Shilonen a stack, which will increase her defense and her damage percent. And when at 2 stacks, the entire team gains damage percent based on Shilonen's defense, up to a maximum of 25.6%. This is obviously going to be Shilonen's best in slot. It synergizes with her normal attacks being used during her support rotation, as well as giving defense which increases both her damage as well as her healing. So, this is by far the best option. The only other option I see being useful is the Favonia Sword. Since Shilonen's buffs aren't based on her stats, you focus on just getting energy or buffing. And since Peak is the only buffing weapon that fits within her kit, the only other alternative really is Favonius. Now it's time for DPS weapons. Peak Patrol Song is still very good, because all of the stats it gives are useful. The damage percent for herself, the damage percent to the entire team as well if you're running a sub DPS, and then you can't forget the monster's amount of defense, but here she actually has some more alternatives. Urakumi Sugiri is a really good stat stick because it has a very large amount of crit damage, as well as giving defense on the passive and normal attack damage. However, this normal attack damage will not affect plunge attacks, which I believe to be her best DPS comp. Misplitter is another option. All these stacks are easy to get, since Shilonen will want to burst as soon as possible. 
and she is also able to infuse her normal attacks, which means all three of Mistblader's stacks are able to be gotten. However, it is worse than Urakumi Sigiri, because the crit is a lot lower thanks to Mistblader's high base attack, and Shilonen cannot benefit from this high base attack. For other 5-star alternatives, you can turn to Haran, Primordial Jade Cutter, Folly Incision, Splendor, or Absolution. For 4-stars, your best bet's going to be the new Craftable Sword. It's the only defense sword that is 4-star other than Cinnabar's Spindle, and Cinnabar's passive is useless to Shilonen. Now it's time for her artifact options, and once again, I'll be starting with her support options. And there is a very easy first choice, being the Hero of Cinder City set. This gives a 40% damage bonus to the two elements Shilonen will react with during the Night Sold state, and this is by far the strongest support set in the game with Night Sold, which Shilonen has within her kit. This allows her to buff 5 out of the 7 elements in the game, because there is the 4 elements you can crystallize with and then Geo itself. The only elements she can't buff are Dendro and Animo, but even within her base kit she can't even buff these so you wouldn't use her with those DPSs anyway. If you don't have a Cinder City set, you can use Arcade Petra. It does have some drawbacks though. The buff is lower, Shilona needs to pick up the shard herself, and she cannot buff Geo characters with this. There is literally no reason to use this over the Cinder City set, but if you don't have Cinder City yet, you can use Petra. As for a main DPS Shilonen, Obsidian Codex is the easy answer. A 40% crit rate buff is absurd, and 15% damage bonus on the two-piece is the cherry on top, but it's not the only option that she has. Four-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams is good as it gives defense and geo damage. Shilona is defense scaling, even on her plunges, which makes this a very synergistic option. If you are able to get crystallizes in your team, 4-piece Nighttime Whispers will also be a good option. That's a lot more efficient to farm, but I would still try and stick to Codex. As for stats, for support, the main thing you're going to need is ER and defense for healing. But her healing is absurd already, so the best build's going to be energy recharge, geo damage, and crit. But if you're using the Peak Patrol song, this changes, since its buff scales on defense. You need 3.2k defense to cap, which means that you're gonna need a main stat, which leads to energy recharge, defense, and crit. However, I would like to say that this crit is incredibly unneeded. Shilonen, in the grand scheme of things, isn't going to be contributing that much damage, it's just that she doesn't have many other options. If you don't want to aim for a good crit ratio, that's entirely fine. You do not need crit on her, it's just my suggestion for insane amounts of min-max. For substats, you prioritize ER, and then you go for defense if you're on signature. Otherwise, you try and go for crit, but again, it's not needed. For energy recharge in a double geo team, you should be fine with about 175%, but in single geo teams, you might want to stick to 220%, and even then, in some teams, you're going to need some teammates using the Favonius weapons or Favonius on Shilonen herself for consistent bursts. As for a main DPS Shilonen, you want to go defense, geo, and crit, with the priority going for crit, defense percent, and then energy recharge. You want about 125% ER to burst consistently in a double geo team, and for mono geo, this goes lower. Try to aim for about a 40% to 150% crit ratio, ignoring Codex's crit rate buff. This is on a non-crit weapon. Now as for her teams, it's gonna take quite a while, as Shilonen is a very flexible character. So I have made the decision to focus on archetypes rather than specific DPS characters. First of all, I would like to put a mention for the Geo DPSs. Shilonen is the first good buffer we've had for Geo characters for a very long time, and this makes Shilonen a prime option for Geo DPSs. But the only ones that are good enough to really mention are Navia and then Shilonen herself. Shilonen is capable of reducing Geo resistance, and with Cinder City she can also buff Geo damage by 40%. She can make Navia an absolute behemoth if you choose to use Shilonen as her support. But as a DPS, Shilonen can either go with Mono Geo or with a Plunge team. I recommend playing her in Plunge more with Farina, Kachina, and Xian Yun. This is because Mono Geo options when it comes to supports are honestly kind of lacking, 
and the plunge characters are way better. Shilonen's plunge is even defense scaling, which means you are still able to build defense on her. Next up, I want to talk about the brute force hyper carries. Since Shilonen is a Geo character, it means she is able to react with a lot of elements, and if you put her in the rotation wrong, she could mess with reactions. But brute force DPSs don't care about. The main example here is Nouvellet, as Shilonen can heal for fanfare, as well as give all of her buffs that I previously stated, like her resistance shred, as well as the Cinder City set. Mono teams also go into this category as Shilonen won't mess with the elemental aura. Then for Vaporize, Shilonen, due to not having much of an off-field presence, can be slotted into Vape comps. The two main Pyro Vaporize carries, Linny and Arlecchino, already tend to not use Kazuha's burst so they do not need his extra application. Due to Shilonen's buffs having a higher uptime, this makes rotations more flexible, but it's not a massive upgrade in terms of damage. Mulani can also use Shilonen, and she's less awkward than Kazuha because of her higher uptime. The one issue I do see is trying to fit in a Hydro Crystallize during your rotation, but it is doable. A Mulani Shilonen Shengling flex team seems to be one of her best, the flex could be Kazuha, but that gives awkward rotations. I personally like Candace for Hydro Resonance and her normal attack buffs, but who you want to put in entirely depends on you. And then for those that are mad that I didn't mention Hu Tao as a vaporized DPS, it's because she's here in the Double Hydro section. Double Hydro usually tacks Jean or Shen Yun at the end for 4 piece Fair Destiny Venerair and heals, but Shilona just in her base kit already has res shred that are almost the same as Viridus and Venerare, as well as a damage percent buff from Cinder City, but she trades it for not being able to heal team-wide. This trade-off is worth it, especially for Hu Tao, since she cannot benefit from the resistance shred from VV, since double swirling is way too hard in her double hydro teams. Although, not being able to plunge does mean you're kinda stuck at cringe C0 gameplay again. And then finally, it's time for me to talk about Shilonen's Consolations. Her C1 gives her teammates interruption resistance while her E is active. I would say this is not her best Consolation, but it helps the people that are less fortunate when it comes to their skill. Maybe some of you can actually start playing Lenny for once and realize why I say he's so good. C2 will give various buffs depending on the character's element. 45% attack and HP for Pyro and Hydra respectively, 50% damage bonus for Geo, 60% crit damage for Cryo, 25 energy and 6 second burst cooldown reduction for Electro. The HP buff for Hydro is good, as HP buffs are very rare, but the attack for Pyro and damage percent for Geo isn't too strong. Navia already gets a stupid amount of damage percent from her teammates. You know, being Shilonen herself, the Cinder City sets, maybe even Shilonen's weapon, Farina, and then her own passives. And then for the pyro characters that scale on attack, they're going to use Bennett anyway. I will say that the electro buff is really funny, since I can actually see things like double burst Clorinde happening now. The cryo buff is largely useless since cryo DPS won't use Shilonen. An additional effect for Shilonen C2 means that her geo sample will have 100% uptime, which enables Shilonen to be used as a support in mono geo teams like Ito, which is very convenient. C3 will level up Shilonen's skill, which includes the resistance shred. This is very good. C4 allows for Shilonen to buff allies' normal, charge, and plunge attacks based on 65% of her own defense. This clowns is flat damage and can be triggered up to 6 times. I wouldn't say it's that powerful. C5 will level up Shilonen's burst, which in my opinion is entirely unneeded. The healing is already insane, and the damage, well, if you're going for C5, you're not doing it for the damage because the reason you're going for C5 is because the C6 is right there. And this is a long one, so time for me to keep it short. After doing anything in Shilonen's E state, the timer of her Night Soul pauses for 5 seconds. During this 5 second window, Shilonen's normal attack scaling is increased by 300% of her defense, and she heals the entire team once every 1.5 seconds for an insane amount. As a C6 Geo DPS, I definitely prefer Chiori here. Shilonen will do more damage in the short term, but Shiori has 100% uptime on her infusion, as well as having her puppets doing damage at the same time. I will say that the healing is great, but if you're gonna C6 anyone and you care about the healing, why wouldn't you just go for a C6 Farina, since it has the same effect anyway. 
Shilonen is the Geo support I've needed for the last 10 months, and my god am I glad she's finally here. The last time we got a truly top tier support was Farina back in 4.2, so the time has come for a new challenger, and I could not be happier with the result. I hope this guide helped you, and if it did, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. For any questions, you can leave a comment or join my Discord which is linked in the description. And while you're there, you may as well follow me on Twitter. But that'll be all from me. Peace.